everyone! Welcome back! It's nice to see you've all made it again. Now, um, I'm doing a little bit of second fixing today. I've done a heap of first fix videos. It's about time I did a second fix video. So if you cast your mind back a couple of weeks ago, or go back, I think it's like two videos, you'll see I first fixed the kitchen. And as promised, we're back there now, and I'm going to second fix it. So, should we get out and have a quick look, see what the kitchen looks like now? Come on then, you ain't gonna see anything in here. So here it is, here's the plastered kitchen, carcasses are in, door's been moved, sockets are in, there's a lovely little socket hiding around the corner, light switch by the door, sockets either side, if you can remember, that was boxing, I've got a nice big cavity under here to put my boxes for the washing machine, the hob and the dishwasher. It shouldn't be a bad day. Although saying that, I have found one issue that I'm going to be having today and I'm going to have to try and get around. But um, I'll tell you what, I always came around, we'll have a little look at that. There's always a problem on every job and my problem today is this cupboard. As you can see, all these shelves, they're actually at the wrong heights. I believe he needs to come down, he needs to go up. I think that one's alright. But it's, you know, it's kind of messed me up a little bit for putting boxes in the back, although I'm going to find a way around it. There is also normally a sheet of hardboard in the back, which doesn't seem to be there. It's so bloody cold today that I took this out of the van, went to put my phone in it, and it's just broken. So filming today is going to be interesting. For all you lot out there that don't film stuff purely because you don't have the equipment, ball. Because right now you are literally cable tied into my laser level tripod. You don't need a lot of equipment to film stuff for YouTube. But anyway, I'm going to show you what I'm installing. All the stuff that's going to be on show, and I, Usually it's painted before I install it, but it's not. They've, they've asked me to screw it back anyway, and they've actually asked me to put the covers on. I'm installing some Knightsbridge stuff. I like Knightsbridge. I did actually recommend it. This is the packet it comes in if you're ever looking for it on the shelf. Never had any problems today, and I've been installing stuff for the last year or two. This is what it looks like on a closer inspection. This is a polished chrome, and as you can see, there are no screws. It's called screwless, which is really nice. And I'll tell you what else makes it quite... Hey, hang on. Can you see the tripod in there? <laughs> all the cable ties. Anyway, it's very simple to use and it's quite good for the customer and for the decorator because these covers just pop on and off. There's a little crevice on the side that you can just put a little flatted screwdriver in, give it a quarter turn, pops off. What's good about that? You get bored, change the covers at a later date. You um, damage a cover, change the covers at a later date. Piece of poo, isn't it? Um, this has got white inserts, you can get black inserts, I think you can get grey inserts, although I might be lying, so you can all that. It's standard on the back, you've got your two separate earth terminals, which here's an interesting one for all you sparks out there. You know when you do your ring continuity? When I've started installing these sockets now that I've got separate earth terminals, it's not always 1.67 between you know your live conductors and your earth. You know normally you can sort of divide it or times it and you can work out what your CPC should be. Mine have always start, they've started to get a little bit higher now and I, I had one job and what I did is I actually took off all the sockets, I waggled them together and it was alright. Put the sockets on and it was higher than 1.67 and I was like, you know what, it must, it must be the fact it's got separate earth terminals. 
there's like an extra little bit of resistance on this bar here. But anyway, <laughs> back to the product review. Yeah, these are a really good socket. I'm gonna show you some of the other bits and pieces in this box. So that's a double socket outlet. Here is a USB socket outlet. Should have really done well out the package, shouldn't I? So, if you want a USB version, that's in there, of your two ports. Um, let's have a quick look at the back. This unit should not be subject to any insulation resistance testing. Yeah, all that same old shit. So if you're ever going to do an insulation resistance test, disconnect him. That's annoying. I saw one guy in the past actually put, he hid out of the way, a double power isolate switch, which I thought was very clever. He made that spur, double power isolate switch, come to do the test, give it a flick, don't have to hang it off. Not a bad idea. I do like that idea. Um, you've got a double pole dimmer switch. Not bad at all. Now remember guys, this is flat plate, which means all the gubbins is in the back. Whereas with like some of the surface mates, well not surface, but you know, stuff that's a little bit more proud, like the white plastic stuff. You can sort of hide a lot of the gubbins from the back in the face plate. Can't do it in flat plate. If you're gonna put flat plate, make sure that the boxes are deep, especially if it's an existing job. If you're doing a quote, go to just hang off a few switches, just have a little look what sorts in the back of the switch. Because I've shot myself in the foot before. Someone said, oh, I've got a little, you know, one bed, two bed house, how much just to change all the sockets and switches? And you just sort of have a little look, you count the points, you give them a price, you go there, you hang it off, you go, dang, hang it, fit in there. And then, uh, yeah, don't do that. All right, that's that. If you spur unit, this is gonna do their underfloor heating. And they've gone for one of the neon. The customer actually supplied all this, he's decided to go for a neon. Personally, I probably wouldn't have done the neon. Um, the neon's more when what you're supplying is a mystery and you just want to be sure that it's on. You're gonna know the underfloor heating's on because the thermostat's gonna be illuminated. So I probably wouldn't have gone for a neon personally myself, but it's all preference and they've decided to go for it. So there you go. And they've got a one gang light switch here, which is gonna do their outside light. I believe that's everything. You've seen everything in the box now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cracking and terminating it all. dark in here so I'm going to put some lights up but before I do that I'm going to show you how I measure up down lights so there's a little bit of a science behind this I was hoping to do it on the counter but because my phone's on all these cable ties I can't tilt the, tilt the phone down it's sort of limited but anyway imagine I'm going to do this imagine it's a hallway there's a nice long hallway like that can you see that and you want to put two lights in it. What you're going to do is a measurement called quarter, half, quarter. So you're going to half it, you're then going to quarter it, and as I said, those lights are going to go at quarter, half, quarter. And I'll show you why we do that. So if we put our lights in, like that, and then we draw the spread of light. So if we try and put how much light is going to be covered from the light to the wall, and we do like a nice round circle, nice equal circle there, and we do the same here. Can you see that the spread is equal? It will equally spread the room. Yeah, it does look like a pair of... <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so it's the end of the day now. I've just finished, I've packed up. But before I leave, I just want to get this underfloor heating thermostat on. Now, before I install it, I'm just going to test it, make sure it's not going to blow up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an insulation resistance test. I'm just going to make sure that the CPC or screen isn't touching the live conductors in any way under the mat or in this cable that goes in the wall. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test it first at 250. Just if there is anything wrong, it's not going to damage it any further with me testing it. That seems okay, so I'm going to go up to 500 now. Test it again. And it seems fine, nothing's touching. Now I've got a crocodile clip on each live conductor, so it's going to go up one conductor, down the cable, whiz around the mat under the floor, come back, back up the cable, and then up to the other crocodile clip. So I'll get a nice resistance reading on here. So let me turn this down to resistance, turn the light on. I have zeroed my lead, so don't worry about that. And we're getting 139. So let me write that value down. 139. Now, before I sit that in stone, let me just give these a pinch. Ooh. Give them a pinch. Test it again, just to see if the value changes. No, it's roughly the same, so I'm going to stick with that. So I've done a few calculations just to make sure the mat's okay. So here's my resistance. Now, if I get my voltage and divide that by my resistance, I'll get amps. I'll get 1.65 amps. I know that my thermostat can take a maximum of 16, so that should be fine so far. Now, if I take my amps and I times it by voltage, I'll end up with my wattage, or power. Now, it's only 381 watts, which isn't much at all, but you know, it is only a little mat. It's just this. And if you want to go one step further, you can get your kilowatts. Now, I'm happy with that. That's, that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect this up. Before I walk out the door, I'm just going to walk around the kitchen and show you what we've got done today. We've got all the sockets on. As you can see, we've got the light switch on. This does the outside light. This connected the live and the neutral left the earth in just because there isn't an outside light at the moment. If it rains or if there's a bit of frost, it's not going to trip the RCD. A couple of sockets there. I've got some under unit lights. I've dressed the wire with a little bit of sticky back trunking. The, there's one junction box up there for that light. That light and this light are off of that little wago box. We've got two socket outlets, one for the hob, one for the washing machine. We've got another wago box which does the upstairs ring, don't ask me. We've got some flexi conduit which I've dressed around the back which does all my circuits. We have another one gang box over here which does the dishwasher. This cupboard never got done today. Everything got brought over to the cupboard but it just never got done. Tomorrow the builder's coming in, he's going to move the shelves. I'm going to turn up in the afternoon and I'm going to connect that all up. So there's the switch view spur, if you remember correctly. That was actually off of the ground floor ring circuit. So he now supplies the underfloor heating. And here we've got our light switch. One for this room, which is dimble. And this one here, which does the under counter lights, which isn't dimmable. Hey chaps. I went back to that kitchen second fix last night, but by the time I finished it was so dark and so late I couldn't do a rundown in the van of what I'd done, so I thought I'd do it this morning. I attended site, did a little bit of jiggery pokery in the cupboard, got all the appliances working, got all the sockets working. Unfortunately, the only thing that isn't working is the cooker circuit, and there's still a little bit of tidying up I need to do in that cupboard. A few labels here and there, and there's some testing on some of the circuits I haven't got live yet. Apart from that, it should be finished next week. Might put a little bit on social media, or maybe a midweek video so you can see a finished result. Another thing in the pipeline next week that will be in a midweek video is how I price work. So make sure you subscribe. I've had a few comments now asking me how I price my jobs. And I think you might be quite interested to see how I do it because I don't go around on social media. I don't ask friends. I don't go on forums. I don't ask people how much they price for a rewire, how much they price for a fuse board. I've got my own method of doing it. I work the prices out myself. If you're interested in something like that, make sure you subscribe and don't miss Wednesday's video next week. Apart from that, guys, Thanks for watching, up here for subscribing, over there for watching another one, down there for comments.